30 something years of radio. <laughs> this is how it ends. I should have signed the damn non compete. Oh, come on. You're going to die up here. What are you kidding me? Here? I'm gonna, I know. You, it's gonna you, be are, you are like Mr. Riverhead. Here. It's going to be like. Everybody, you know, comes the morning show, everybody is locked in. I mean, I saw Sean Walter driving in his car to work. You know, he had it locked on to 1390, listen to everything that's going on. You know, you that's got what to. He, he is the king of the airways. He is that Mr. Riverhead. How many years have you been up here? How many years has this been in Tria World Cup? 35. 35 Since years. 1979 was the first time I wandered up the stairs across the street. Yeah. Well, and that's coming from Mr. Beautiful Historic. Yeah. I mean, downtown, downtown Riverhead. He's all part of the flavor, the mix of historic downtown uh, Riverhead. Speaking of which, you wanted matches? This is your retirement present. Wow, Latin Quarter. Nice. The real deal, too, from New York. <laughs> I'm impressed. Very nice. Yeah. So what's going on, Thug Child Gangster? Hey, you're, man. you're in the Latin Quarter I, over here. I turned 28. 28. She, yeah. I'm 60. How old are you? Benito. Are you really? What? 59. He's 59, and we got a kid amongst our midst of A baby. Here. You're older than yeah. Bruce? Yeah, I'm older than Bruce. I'm an old man. That's why Wait a minute. I'm, uh, Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why should it surprise you that because he's older than Because he's like me? a wily youngster. Look at the attitude. Yeah, the attitude's there. He's but... had a bad attitude since forever. <laughs> since I first met him eons ago. When yeah. his father sat me in the, in the chair and, and, and uh, examining my eyes. And says to me, read the chart on the wall. And I said, if I could read that chart, I wouldn't be sitting here. He didn't appreciate that. How old were you? I was a baby. I was four years old. Oh, my God. Are you serious? No. That was back. My father opened up the joint in 1960 at uh, 55 West Main Street. That's now the Bodega. I mean, that's... You that's know, the flavor of the place. And... and you know, Riverhead's going to become all gin joints. That That's what it's going to evolve into. It's going to be another patch org where all the little mom and pops, they're yeah. like, you know, they're going to pack it up and get out of here. Well, Patch Og also has uh, a lady shoe store. They also have Richard York of Patch Og. Very, very, They have a couple of, they have a dress store or two. And they've got a they lot have, of They um, have uh, Blums, which is, you know, and they have... Um, Affordable housing. That too. There's no such thing as affordable housing. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, let's how, talk how about the coin. How much is affordable housing? How, how, what's, what's the monthly rent on affordable housing? I don't know. You don't know? No. You see, that's the big problem that's going on. We got the thug child gangster over here. It is not easy. You cannot live here. I'm telling you, man. I am 28 years old. I'm freaking working at a counter at Lombardi's on Love Excuse Lane. Excuse me. Just trying to... Yeah, bring in some extra cash. You, it, and pay then you the got the exactly. utilities. Your health insurance, freaking school loans, Jana. car loans. Language. Freaking, well, I said. Yeah, I know, but I know what that leads to. It would it so, would never. So And I don't have a delay here. You see, the problem is there's no jobs. So in other words, let me see if I get this correctly now. So I'm worried about you. Me? What, no, oh, him. Okay. What you're going to say, and I should be worried about her. Why do you think I'm going to say something? Because <laughs> I know you too many years. No, no. You see, the big story we had here the is not... fish. Wait a minute. We had a gefilte fish taste off. Yeah. That was awful. <laughs> yeah. Then there was the Saturday morning you brought me up Little Debbie's. Don't worry. It's it's early and by the way, the and what show. And what did I, and what did I say? Because he fed me a little Little Debbie's. Little Debbie's. Well, I got Love something Love eating Little Debbie's. That, that did not go over big at home. What's in that honey, honey Just, bear? You know, forget about the North Fork lifestyle with all these is that fish hooks? Is that fish hooks so <laughs> hooch? Handcrafted this and handcrafted that that nobody really cares. It's a media event. What I have here to present to you from the North side is oh, wow. Irv's world-famous patented swerve juice. This is like a, an old school Riverhead recipe that's good for anything What's that, in there? that ails you. It's beautiful. It's, it's herb swerve juice. I just want to smell it. Just smell it. Take a little taste and tell me what you think. You can't get this East 
of 105. It doesn't happen. You can only get this in the Latin Quarter, an historic, beautiful downtown Riverhead. What's in it? The Renaissance Center of Eastern Long Island. It's so pink. It is. It's all natural squeezins over here. We have papaya juice. We have pineapple juice. It's all natural, organic, hand-blended, artisan swerve juice. Swerve juice. Thug nasty. Would, would you like? Swerve juice. No, no, thank you. you no, like no, no, a little no, taste no, no. of this? This is really nice. Because I once, I once, when, when Sandy from the, uh, the Blue Door showed yeah. up. Sandy Bug Juice. Sandy Bug Juice. She brought that little thing of green bug juice. I tasted it. Good for you. Hey, let's talk politics. Can we yeah. talk politics? <laughs> we, got, we got 10 minutes to fill. <laughs> so everybody's crucifying, you know, Jimmy Wooten. Did you see what he said? I so mean, what? He, he was honest. I mean, But it was like one know, of the five stupidest on, things. It's politics. They all do this. You don't think for a second nothing happened with the Democrats? But they're going to whack. They're looking to whack Mason. That's what they're doing. Oh. I'm aware of that. But yeah. I'm also aware of the fact that Wooten... Had he called my political consulting, I'm just shut up. Oh, you would have gotten know the, the, you know, this is all the free words. The, you don't think all these guys think about how they set it up when they went to the convention, all right? <clears throat> you don't think there was any arm twisting before that vote? It's like There's always oh, arm twisting. We, we, we got to knock off Sean. You know, they, the fix was in, so they knocked him off, and now well, they what? got the primary. Now, can you imagine if he wins the primary and he comes back the blue? Bloodletting that's going to happen in the clubhouse? So what do you well, want on the conservative So you line? say to the press, on the record, I blocked it from happening, because he's a bass, not a baritone. I blocked it from happening. I was trying to protect myself. <laughs> that backfired. Well, yeah, the guy now that, you that, damn that's well, what politics is about. Now you know damned well we're going to go to the public hearing on an elected official being on the executive board. Oh, this, this is going to be... I got nothing to lose by trying face. to do the right thing for the town. In other words... <laughs> He doesn't always do the right thing for the town. When it, it, 30 years I've been waiting <laughs> for the me. right thing for the town. Come on. <laughs> why should it just change like now? I don't know. You know? I'm just, I'm but just... just think about it. Sean comes over. He wins the thing. He, he's going to be with, forget the axe. He's coming in with a chainsaw. And from what I'm hearing on the street, Tommy Cannoli is going to get the job as the leader of the Republicans. I mean, oh, had, that would be so We funny. had Tommy the street <laughs> boss, Tommy the capo. Now he's going for the whole thing. I mean, now we're talking action over here. So, you know, and then you clean house and coats. Forget about him. He's going to be a Luca Brazzi somewhere. Oh. Tommy gets in there. You, you can bet on that. <laughs> just, just. But so Sean you know, would run. Everybody, you know, I love the press. They all like dance around this stuff. But what do you think's going on in the clubhouse? You know, forget about that. What's going on in the bars? It's, you know, you can't say it in the clubhouse because someone else is going to hear it. But the whole game is rigged. You know, it's a power play going on right now. I always thought Wall Street was rigged. I didn't realize that everything is rigged. Everything, yeah, everything, is, everything rigged. is rigged. Come on. Every single thing. Yeah. Even the media. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out because, uh, you know, okay, they said the committee men, you know, they knocked off Sean. The crown princess has got, you know, the brass ring. She's going. Yeah, oh, But she here is comes right. Sean back, and if he could pull it off, man, is that going to say something. Where'd you get this? Where did I yeah, get these this? Butter oh, rolls are awesome. Th this is uh, pop. This is old school butter roll because Tony made these. Oh, Papa this wasn't an Anthony. This was the old man. Oh, really? Oh, you serious? Yeah, Tony cut this. You see, oh my you, God. you get the young kids in there now when they do the butter roll. What do they do? When they slice the roll, they put their hands on the top yeah. and they compress the roll. Right, right. And it's a crummy roll. Right. This is old school Riverhead how roll. He, how does he cut? He cuts it, he puts it on his side here. So if the blade slips, he cuts his wrist in half. Oh, good. Which is yes. okay. That's nice. And, uh, but I the, like that. It, it's a good That's Hardcore. Yeah. See, that's but passion. Passion, yeah. <laughs> cut, cut your hand off. So, yeah, I, I'm really digging on these, you know, the pop, you know, these guys are going to kill themselves. And, uh, you know, they were coming in, oh, can you put a sign in the window? And it's like, well, you want to know something? I'm not going to be there. So, so whatever. They're, they're losing their, uh, you know, the crossroads of civ civilization over there. It's like good frontage where these guys uh, totally are. Totally is. Tommy's going to be out of you. Tommy's going to be besides himself. Where's he going to put this on? What are you going to, what's going in there? 
Uh, I don't know. You know, George Malone's buying the property. It should close uh, sometime in uh, July. And, you know, she's a well-heeled visionary. She's you the new it, darling like a, of Main Street. Wow, and, George uh, Malone. She's going to make it nice. Maybe like a dance. Would she do like a dance thing upstairs where the... Where the no, nah, nah, she's no. not going to do it. She make like a, I, like I a, really don't know. You know, she had the architects in. I, she never told me. I guess the bottom's going to be retail. But, uh, you know, she, you could do lots of stuff if you got money. You and that's an what it is. If that was your apartment, the upstairs where the studio is, mm. or it was like some kind of like private club or something. Ooh. Someone I know has drawings that he could have put six apartments upstairs. Wow. And he'd be in Fat City right now. Mm -mm. But no! He wants to go to Maine. That, that's, that's Jerry. Well, it's the promised land, Benito. <laughs> it is. You don't my understand. Taxes, it's the promised land. My taxes are $800 a year. They got no year. taxes up there. They got no services. So when it snows, services? you got to shovel Let yourself you out. Services. All it does is snow up there. My roads are plowed better than they are on the island. Here, what do they so. think? What do they think about your accent up there? Because they got some pretty thick accents. No, the, the accent. They call me a flatlander over there, but they never see flat Jewish lander. people up there. I'm like, you know, the only Jewish guy within, uh, you know, so about like eighty enamored? miles. Nah, nah. It's it's they're, they're, they're nice people. You know, everybody yeah, thinks yeah. they're uh, a nice Jewish guy who eats pork. Eats pork. <laughs> I love pork. I, I love cook pork bacon. Real good. It's the forbidden fruit. That's what it is. I gotta say, have you ever seen uh, he and his wife dancing, Bruce? No. It's the most beautiful thing. He is the most graceful ballroom dancer I've ever seen. Oh, you know who else dances as well? When did you, you see you dance? At um, at Mozzie. Oh, that was disco. That wasn't ballroom. What? It was disco dancing. Yeah. What were you on? <laughs> I don't know, man. You don't want Over to at the Greeks? Yeah, Wait. that was uh, when he had Rusty, the old-time DJ it spinning It looked like you guys vinyl. were, but you guys were, like, waltzing. Well, you can you can do whatever you want. Uh, you know? That's ballroom dancing. Mm. Just because it's disco music doesn't mean it wasn't ballroom dancing. Okay. You know, it was she's a, waltz. a kid. You know, she knows. And I know the waltz because that's my favorite ballroom dance. Yeah. Especially Meanwhile, you know, who else dances? you know who else dances really well? And you wouldn't expect it. Besides Kathy and Jerry Steiner, who? Kathy and Hal Luce. Nice. Ooh. Well, you know, you take dance lessons. You you learn how to dance. I got. I, I we went with them a couple. Of, we went to them several years ago to, when she was still alive to see Donna Summer and Gloria Gaynor. And <gasps> the Love and who. Spoonful are coming. And I forget who else the at the West Theater. Hampton Theater. And I'm there they were in the aisles, these two kids, like doing a boogaloo, and it's like, geez, Hal, I didn't know you were so light. Did you bring feet. the beast up here? You brought the beast. You bought a can of beer. Milwaukee's best. Oh, God. Yeah. So, you mainly hang out east of Route 105. Uh, yeah, these days. Yeah. I'm at home a lot. So, I mean, what's the gig out there? Is that your age group that's frequenting oh, no. these places? Well, like you know what? Noah? There's like, there's, a, there's I don't an get influx. It. There's an influx of young... Uh, 20 and 30 somethings from the city, like young hipsters, young couples yeah. coming out to start families. You know, they they busted their butt in Brooklyn and now they've got some the coin. The buying houses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, the, the real estate market's looking pretty nice, too. So these it's a good place to invest. Invest. So mm -hmm. all the locals are getting out. And the Brooklyn hipsters. North Fork is like a huge buzzword, you know, marketing term. Yeah. So, yep, but, that's what's happening. But I look at the restaurants over there, and it's like, especially Paw Paw. <laughs> oh, that's Taylor. <laughs> Taylor. Chef, Chef Taylor. Chef Taylor. Chef Taylor Nappy was at First and South. Um, oh, he's, God. He, there was, like, a really big um, blowout between him and uh, the glory Captain Dave Burson over, um, what was it? The, uh, duck, it wasn't Duck's Feet. You know what no, they need? Duck Tongue. Duck Tongue, duck tongue right. tongue. Can you imagine going into a restaurant and ordering deep-fried duck tongues? Well, you know I what? Mean, it's what kind of person? Jerry, Jerry listen. <laughs> so I, I, I interviewed Chef Marco. Yeah, Chef from Marco. 
Kachi North Fork, right? Mm. And he was talking about, and he's a he's a serious high end chef. And he was talking about how he went through that as a young chef. You go through like a part where you're, you know, you're interested in exotic ingredients. It's sort of just like part of the. Um, you know, the natural progression. What natural some, progression? Normal don't know, people like don't a, eat duck's tongue. But, I mean, to me, that's like, would you want going to a restaurant, if I saw his menu and I saw crispy duck tongues served on a stick, you know, a twig, it, I, I mean, know, I'd I'm be like, out of that place one, two, three. <laughs> and then you got you know what the North Fork I was needs. walking the street mm. there. He's not an advertiser here, is he? No. <laughs> but the, you know what the North Fork like, needs more of? What's Modern that? snack bars. Yeah. Michelangelo's utilitarian Italian food, real food. Utilitarian food. You walk out with your belly full and you can have a little bag, you know, but you go into these North Fork lifestyle places. Oh, Lenny's. this is oh. chef so and so. So you walk out of the place, you're starving, you got to drive back, stop at Lenny's, get three slices, you know, that cost you about the same I thing as you paid for the table. I water. like. I like it's both. Like it's insane. I How like did he get away sides. with this? I don't know. And I'm like, Can we, who's paying for this? Go ahead. Can we hit the break? Sure. <sighs> Thank you. Take a trip to Italy without ever leaving the North Fork at Michelangelo's in Mattatuck. Of course, you'll start with a nice antipasto, and then it's on to your main course. Perhaps you'll want pasta, maybe some chicken, or as they say in Italian, polo. Meal, which is tatello in Italian, or some frutta di mare, which is seafood in Italian. No matter what you decide on, one thing is for sure, you and your family are going to love it. Of course, Michelangelo's has pizzas, including the very popular grandmas and other specialty pies, as well as your favorite Italian heroes. Just call them at 298-4100, 298-4100, and they'll be ready when you get to Michelangelo's in the Mattatuck Plaza Shopping Center on Route 25 in Mattatuck. So take that trip to Italy, you deserve it. Come on in to Michelangelo's on Route 25 in the Mattatuck Plaza Shopping Center in Mattatuck. Tonight, the Yankees host the Miami Marlins and the Mets take on the Toronto Blue Jays. See, I read that line. WRIV Weather. And I'm reading the weather live. Cloudy today, the high 73. Cloudy with a chance of showers tonight, low 61. Sunny tomorrow, the high 83. Offshore southeast winds 10 knots. These two feet on the ocean and the foot of the sound right now at 68 degrees. Don't press that button. Don't sell out. Don't sell out. You got to read the news. I read Come the on. news already. Yeah? Yeah. When did you read it? You put it on the machine there. The 545. Machi yeah? 545. This morning. You know, that's the beauty of, two of, versions. of small town radio is everything should be live. It should be an adventure. You know what I'm saying? Right now, this is an adventure. This well, no, I'm not going to. This is very calm for me. I'm enjoying this. So, I'm you glad know. one of us is. So, Mark. we're going to continue Go the Riverhead Misfit meetings at Mozzie, for sure. Yeah, well, that's the whole thing. It's like, you know, the Misfit sort of came and went. It had its day. It lasted about two years. It was pretty it popular. It was beautiful. Fun. Yeah, it was nice. We it was great fun, thing, but it was just one of those things. It yeah, was... well, it gets old after a while. You know, everything know. runs its course, and it ran its course, and then Frankie Boy sold out. There went the oh. ovens. What the hell are you doing? What was I doing? What are you what doing? Are you what doing are, right are you? I'm getting out, too. There you go. <clears throat> the rest because my case. I'm, you know, like the politicians at 200 Howell Avenue says, when one door closes, another one opens. And it's like the same thing uh -huh. with politics. You know? With everything. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, one's out, another one's in. But here, it's the same Jerry, old story. But before, it's... before we go, I want to I wanna hear a story from when you were a kid at the store, a memory. A memory? Yeah. I was coming in that store since I was eight years old. My father used to bring me in, like, on weekends or Saturday and... Uh, those were the days when the side pieces weren't attached to the front of the frame. So I used to sit there, and the whole day I would be screwing the side pieces oh my God. to the front. See, a stick of screwdrivers <laughs> in, in my finger. And you know what my reward was? I would get taken out to breakfast at the Twin Diner or Irma's or Cy White's. That that's where we would go. He would, uh, you know. But it was, you know, it was a different era back then. It was now. You kids control. Where was the twin diner? 
the twin diner is spicy. That was Cap oh, Canis. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Cool. All these eateries used to be open at 5 o'clock because all the fishing guys oh, would right, come right. out here. There was a lot of fishermen that mm -hmm. used to come out, and they used to go for breakfast before they would go. I mean, I think the twin like diner Bill was Carlin. open even before 5 o'clock. Wow. But, you know, those were the glory days of downtown Rivhead, three supermarkets, two movie theaters, everything what was, the was jammed. Doing? The who? Chief? Chief was, uh, he, he was, was teaching kid. school in Greenport, I think. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, th this was a great town to grow up in, and, right. uh, you know, there was no place else. You had Rivhead, you had Patchwork, 58 was the hospital in a swamp in uh, some farm equipment place. Well, no, there was also the Safeway. Safeway, there's it's still, a circle. There's still, a, yeah. there's still some swamp land up there that they're... Uh, selling as commercial products. Well, yeah. What's funny about it is, I heard that there was there was a there was a, a there was a, a panic in town hall recently. I don't know if you heard about this. There's always a panic. In oh, there was a panic. Yeah. There what were the four heck? blades of grass found on Route 58, and so they're trying to figure out how to pave them over. See, it is a bad attitude. You got to think in terms of the tax base, because. You know, we have to bribe them to come here, but think 10 years down the road when we cops gotta, are making, we have to renew you know, $200,000 so when, a year. When we have to renew their bribes. <laughs> I mean, you need a like full-time police down the street. force just for Tanga. Remember when Tanga first came in? We're going to have our own security, right? Well, how did that work out? I mean, you got professional crews coming out, you know, lifting whole things of expensive jeans. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but it's a different world. It's like we're dinosaurs, Benito. We are dinosaurs. Oh. We're still thinking like we're young, but we're not. We're, we're like history. The gangster over here, she's the new breed. She's taking over the world, and we're just getting ready to. Yeah, you know, that, you know, when I, when I look at it. She's taking over the world in her ripped jeans. Yeah, yeah and ripped I'm, jeans. How much did you pay for those ripped jeans? Honestly, these are the most expensive Probably jeans. Probably 75 I've ever had. bucks, Jerry. How much did you pay for those? More things? than $100. More than $100? Oh, and my parents' jeans with ripped. a hole in your knee. They're, That's why the ripped. world is, is the way it is. You know, people used to look down upon, like, remember the song Dance with the Lady in a Hole in Your Stocking? They just look down on stuff like oh, that. I, it, it's like, and now we got marijuana, you know, as, as soon as the government figures how to tax it. Wait, oh, my that, God. What's it's that a, thing on the top over there on the counter? It's a cash crop. What, what is that on the counter next to the book of matches? It's, oh, that it's, thing? That's 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 called twisting a Dutch. That's <gasps> all. You twisted a Dutch. Dutchie. Yeah. Is that related to a doobie? Yeah, yeah. Is you that the new term? It's a big yeah. fat doobie. You know, it's like if Jack gets the green light to grow all this medicinal marijuana, you know, now that I'm going to be retired, it's like I want a job in quality control to see how the stuff is. <laughs> And the thing is, oh, this is this ain't bad. It's not rough. It it it's like, <laughs> oh wow, man. Hey, th this stuff is like really strong. You have, you want to try this, Benito? Uh, not right no, now. I got to. I bet you gangster. I want to do the dream. commercial. Oh, hey, wait a second. Let me let me oh, get. The beast. Oh, this is. Oh, I have a beer with this. Okay. All okay, right. we're going to do the commercial, and we might come wow. back. And then we'll come back and wrap this up. We'll have to do Rory Kelly next week. Oh, man. There's this. Oh. Maximus Health and Fitness of Riverhead is 25,000 square feet of everything you need to create a new you. Maximus Health and Fitness, 130 East Main Street, has state-of-the-art exercise equipment, free weights, professional personal trainers, and private workout areas. They're next to the Suffolk Theater in the heart of historic downtown Riverhead. Use their child facilities, tanning stations, a hair salon, and smoothie bar with your membership at Maximus. Your membership also includes a full calendar of fitness classes like cross training, weight training, boot camp, Zumba, spin, yoga, Pilates, and a lot more. Start a new, healthier lifestyle that you can stick with all year long. Join Maximus Health and Fitness, 130 East Main Street in Riverhead. Call 369-6293. 369-6293. Check their website at MaximusRiverhead.com or come on in to Maximus Fitness today. Maximus Health and Fitness, being healthy and getting in shape has never been easier. One time won't do it alone. You gotta learn to heal yourself. Look into the mirror and wait for someone else. You gotta wanna talk to yourself. Like 
that's Rory Kelly. She was one of the musicians that played at the One Guitar uh, Benefit Show at the Vale Levitt, raising money for Maureen's Haven out a Homeless Outreach Program. Uh, I, I followed up with Don Bracken. He delivered a $5,000 check from the concert proceeds yesterday. Um, he said that on Tuesday. Plus another 410 in CD sales. And then another 350 in additional CD sales. So. Good morning, Rory. How are you? Good morning. How are you doing? I'm great. So far, so good. So what's going on, young lady? Well, I'm actually in the last, like, 16 hours of my fundraising campaign for my brand new album. So <laughs> you caught me at, like, a crucial moment in my life. Excellent. So what? So where can, where can we uh, help you out? Um, yeah. I'm, um, if you go to rising.rorykelly.com... Um, that's the website for the crowdfunding campaign, and uh, you can pre-order the album there. And there's also cooler stuff that you can contribute for, like uh, house concerts, dinosaur drawings, hand drawn by me, very, very artsy and crayon, very fancy, and um, you know other cool stuff like that. Did you say dinosaur drawings? Did you say dinosaur drawings? Did I hear that? Oh, no. Did I lose you? No, I don't know. Did you lose me? Bruce, I think something's going on. <laughs> Hello? Hello? I don't know what's going on. I think what we lost her. What do you think her. is going on? I don't know. I think we lost her. Well, Hello? that's all right. We got, we got her plug in How there. How did we lose her? I don't know. Where'd Jerry go? Jerry he's left the universe. Yeah, he's, he's, he's up, uh, up at the moon by now. Should we try getting her again? No, no, it's fine. I mean, really, you know. Well, go ahead. Give the her show is tanked, so it's not a big deal. It's not tanked. This was the best show ever. It's my 25th show. Jerry Steiner lighting a... Hey, hey it's Rory. Did I lose you guys? Yeah, Hi. I don't know what happened there. I don't know what happened. It was like you went into a dead zone. Did she... I think she did again. Are you back in the oh. dead... Hello. Hey, are you there? Yeah. Are you there? I don't know. Yeah, I lost you. Oh. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Well, well, I, did you say dinosaur drawings? I did say dinosaur drawings. <gasps> do you do them? I do them, yes. Oh, They're my God. They're extremely high quality. You know, I have a 96 box of Crayola, so we're talking, Oh, you know. my God. And they're in crayon? Yes. Oh, my God. I love yes. this girl. I love... I, I, do you do uh, Sharpie art, too? Um... I'm not quite that skilled. <laughs> One day. Sharpies are, like, indelible. <laughs> Cr crayons are amazing. I, all right, so, so just tell us a little bit more about yourself and um, how you became a musician, because I want to know. Oh, yeah, well, um, I just, I love music. I first heard um, in the summer of 98, um, it was, like, when Lilith Fair was starting up and uh, Sarah McLaughlin and Sean Colvin and Cheryl Crow and all these amazing women were making music and singing original songs all over the radio. And it was such a wonderful time to grow up. Grow up. And um, Where did you grow so up? I heard that as a teenager. And I was like, okay, that's what I want to do. Where, where did you grow up? <laughs> oh, I grew up here on Long Island. Um, but I grew up more up island. Um, I'm from Basel, New York, originally. Okay. And then where are you now? I'm now currently in Bohemia. Okay. Uh, I'm one of those people who moves like every 10 minutes though. So who knows what might happen? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I'm trying to I'm trying to stay I'm going to stay in Mattituck for uh, the rest of the year, I guess until March and then figure right. out what the heck is going to happen to me. <laughs> well, um we let's let's plug that uh, fundraiser for you again, that fundraiser site. I know, I'm not losing you again. Uh-oh. Well, Maybe you're right, Bruce. Maybe the show is tanked. It was still my favorite show of all time. I loved having Jerry on here. Jerry is a trip. Jerry is he fun is... to be with. And as long as you don't mind... Oh, and Rory, because we're going to... We'll get it... We're, we'll, we'll, we'll talk we'll, soon. Again. And this time, hopefully, we'll manage to keep the phone connection open. Hello, I don't know. Hello, do I hear you? <laughs> yeah, we're going we're gonna to end right here because we got to pick up all the commercials and stuff like that anyway. Um, but we'll reschedule you for some time when we can make sure that yeah, Ma yeah. Bell has everything in order. Okay, yes. That, that's it. I'm going to go with that. It's a yes on that. There. Now, I love having Jerry Steiner up here. Even though, I meant to tell you, um, 
My hair wasn't gray at all the first time I had him up here. <laughs> <clears throat> he's a he's a great dude. He's who? And he's a, a hoot. And an and a, a seriously amazing friend. He's a you very know? good friend. I've known him for a long time. He has a very interesting perspective on life. Totally. Um and I think what you learn from Jerry Steiner is all kidding aside, is that um you don't take it all that seriously. Right. You know, because it's, it's you, you know, you everybody get gets up. out every nobody gets out of here alive anyway. Right. right. That's exactly right. So you might as well have a good time doing it. You know, and, and it may be all about the coin, but don't make it don't make it all about the coin. You know, have a good time. Is that time. like all about that base? Yes. That's exactly right. Hey, let me ask you a question. You're a young person. Uh, am I? I think so. All right. Well, um, there was a song that Fats Waller did in the, in, the, in, the, in the late 30s called All That Meat and No Potatoes. Yeah. And, and the meat obviously referred to a female tush. And you can only imagine what the spud stood for. No. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Between your belly button and your chin, capiche? The potato. Oh, I well, got it. Okay. No, I thought it was something different. No. I'm thinking it's not a no, boy. No, no, no. This is a, it's a bad woman. <laughs> All that meat and no potatoes just but, ain't wet like green tomatoes. Oh. So she anyway. doesn't, she's not. So now, right. Yes. So then I'm saying to myself, all about that base. Does that refer to the same thing as the meat that in the Fast Wilder song? I think it's talking about how all know, that meat um, and no it's not no 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 it's it's not exactly the same thing it's tomatoes. talking about how she has a healthy body and she's not one of these skinny girls oh. that's airbrushed and photoshopped so that it has nothing to do with no it's just talking about how that's not real the stuff that you see in magazines and the women you see in magazines it, it's not actual they're not? No, they're no, they're airbrushed and photoshopped to like Damn. completely. It's completely unrealistic and and unreal. If you look into it, it's it's actually pretty phenomenal. Gianna has, by the way, quite a photo spread of her uh, modeling clothes last summer in Sag oh, Harbor. Yeah, it was pretty cool. That was last June. That was seriously, and I did uh, thrift thrift store couture because most of what I wear um, is given to me or thrifted uh and I, I went to salvation army i spent 8808 and i must have gotten you know like six pairs of jeans I, I don't know it says it in the article anyway this was a great show um Jer thank you to jerry steiner and rory kelly and to you most of all bruce tria thank you